watching sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow only golden. Golden, golden things. in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird Well, good morning. And uh, as you can see, we've just left Popero, back up on the coast path now. I've been walking for about 14 minutes, I think. Um, like I said yesterday, I stayed at Great Kello Farm campsite and I packed up there early this morning. Uh, then it was about a 30 minute walk back down into Popero. Um, so we just walked through Popero, climbed out the other side. And yeah, this is where we're uh, speaking now. Um, so yes, yeah, started off another nice morning. It's due to be a bit cloudier today, but it's nice and bright at the moment, quite hot. Um, but I think the first place we're gonna get to is Talland Bay, I think it's called. And then after that, we'll be on to Loo. So I think there's a few places today where I can stop uh, after Loo. Uh, we got Down Derry, I think. And then um, the possible end point for today is Port Wrinkle. Uh, my campsite tonight is actually at Whitsand Bay, um, but the guide for today suggests stopping at Port Wrinkle. So when I get to Port Wrinkle, I'll see how I'm feeling. If I've got it in me, I'll carry on walking to Whitsand to the campsite. Uh, if not, um, I'll look at getting a bus or a taxi to the campsite and then you know, returning to Port Wrinkle in the morning. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for today. Uh, last night was pretty cold. Um, I was lying in my tent and you could see my breath, you know, as I was out breathing out, you could see the, uh, yeah, it was that cold. Um, quite a bit of condensation in the tent overnight, but you know, it was all right. I slept actually pretty well, better than I normally would, I think, in the tent. So I must have been quite tired after yesterday's walk. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's get going and um, yeah, see how we get on today. Talon Bay was quite nice, small little sort of pebbly stony cove and a car park and a beach cafe there but um, I think I got there about five to nine and the cafe opens at half past so I stopped there for five minutes on the bench and I just enjoyed the smell of all the seaweed that's been washed up. Um, anyway then it's a steep quite a short steep climb out of Talon Bay and then once you're at the top of that climb it's, you're walking along quite wide flat 
nicely maintained paths to where I am now. And I think I'm around three, maybe two and a half miles to Lou. So uh, yeah, that'd be the next place probably I stop and maybe have a cup of tea. Well, it's quite windy, so hopefully you can still hear me, but that is my first view of Lou Island or St. George's Island. So, um, yes, I guess that's the start of Lou on the headland just there. And then in around the corner, we have to walk up the mouth of the river from West Lou over to East Lou. So that was a statue of Nelson, the one-eyed bull seal. He was known in the harbors of Cornwall for 25 years uh, before setting up his home on Lou Island and apparently used to come into the harbor here at Lou and um, yeah, have all of his meals. Right, so this is Millindreef Beach behind me. Um, Lou is back around that way. Oh, it was really busy in Lou. I mean, it is bank holiday, Saturday, um, you know, Easter weekend. So yeah, it's gonna be busy. But yeah, getting through there was a bit of a pain. Anyway, climbed out of Lou. Then it's been quite easy walking. And some of the houses up here on the cliff, um, some of those are absolutely out of this world, incredible. Um, but yeah, I've just got a millinery. There's another hill now climbing out of this bay. So I was just stopping here, catching up with you guys. Um, and then we're gonna head on, I think it's Seaton, two and a half miles next. So uh, yeah, just have a quick break and then we'll push on. God, that was a steep climb, that one. <clears throat> I think back where I last spoke to you, where I was having the break before hitting up that hill. Oh, it was all it was all like tarmac road, but I don't know what the incline was, but it was it was really steep. And then once the tarmac ran out, it went to sort of a single lane, single track, uh, stony dirt sort of path. Um, yeah, it just seemed to go on and on. Anyway, so I was glad I had that little break before attempting to tackle that one. Um, I had to take a few stops on the way up. Uh, anyway, just past the monkey sanctuary. Oh, I really wanted to go in, but I certainly haven't got the time for it. But yeah, that would have been nice to have a little look around in there. Uh, anyway, I think I'm about a mile and a half from Seaton now. So yeah, and then after that, it's down Derry. So I'm, I'm ticking off all these little places on the way to my end point for the day. So feeling pretty tired. Um, I can see Whitsand Bay and I can see Rain Head actually, which we won't be getting to until tomorrow. But you know, if I can see that and that's tomorrow's walk, then it's sort of giving me a bit of hope that maybe I can get as far as Whitsand today. But yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll try and show you over to Rain Head now. It's a bit hazy today. Actually, it was clearer yesterday. I should have shown it to you yesterday, but um, anyway, I'll, I'll try and show you now on the on the camera. Oh, boy. 
comes right to that I set myself aside Lead the way on this trial If you don't know the way We can stop and make a change I know we walk for days Losing hope, fading love This night will be okay Waking up to another Right, so we've come through down Derry and I stopped in the pub there, took my shoes off, had sort of like half an hour just to get myself ready for this last push onto Port Wrinkle, which is next. I think about, mm, I don't know, three miles. Um, and then when we're at Port Wrinkle, we will make the decision whether to push on the Whit Sands or get a taxi. <laughs> Well, there you go, that's the first view we've had of Plymouth. The first and, well, the first and only city on the southwest coast path. Chelsea. Right, so that's Port Wrinkle in the uh, centre of the screen there. Um, and that's where the guidebook says I should finish today. But I've got a campsite over in the middle of the screen there where the chalets are on the cliff that's that's over at Whitsand I think that's Tregenhawk and um, yeah I'm camping over there so yeah that's the extra bit I need to do um, and I feel like I'm probably going to go for it but we're head down into Port Wrinkle and then make a decision when we're down there Well, as you can see, we've climbed up out of Port Wrinkle now, and there was a, a fingerboard uh, post down there saying two and a half miles to Tregantle, which is the uh, MOD firing uh, range there. There's a big fortification there. There's no firing today, I've already checked that, so we, we should be safe to walk through. Um, and I probably, after we get to Tregantle, I don't know, another half a mile, three quarters of a mile to the campsite. So anyway, I've gone for it. I've just climbed up out of uh, Port Wrinkle though and I found a bench. So I'm going to sit down and give myself 10 minutes and then, uh, yeah, then we'll push on again. But I am tired. <laughs> Well, that must be the quietest golf course I've come across on the whole coast path. I've not seen one person. Well, a couple of walkers, but no one playing golf. Right, so this is the entrance into the military firing range. And as there's no flag at the top of the white pole there, then it means there's no firing, so it's safe for us to continue. Um, if the flags were up, uh, there is an alternative route out that way onto the road and you have to go around the firing range but yeah anyway so we can go through today which hopefully is a slightly more direct route So I've just come out of the MOD firing range just behind me and the fingerboard here says it's four miles to Rame Head. Um, obviously I'm not going as far as that, thankfully. Uh, I reckon I've got about another mile, possibly. Um, and the coast path now is just running parallel to a road up to my left, uh, which is called Military Road. And that will take us all the way up to the campsite. But uh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm obviously gonna stick to this bit of the coast path rather than walking on the tarmac. But um, yeah, we're, we're almost there. So I'll bring you back when we get up to the campsite.
This is one of the beaches as a child I used to come to. A bit of a climb down to the beach and back up again at the end of the day. When the tide is out, uh, the beach here is beautiful. Uh, I actually spent the weekend there. Actually, one of the chalets that you can see in the middle of the screen there on the cliff is part of my stag do. After like sort of our party night out in Plymouth, me and my dad came out here and spent a couple of days in the chalet there. So. Yeah, if I can um, find that in a minute, I might point that one out. But yeah, it's beautiful. Apart from when we were here, it was <laughs> misty and raining the whole time, but it was still nice to sort of stay there and have the sea uh, right outside your window for a couple of days. Well, there you go, 19 and a half miles later, 10 and a half hours walking, and I've made it to my campsite. I'm really pleased I did push on uh, from Port Wrinkle to walk to the campsite because if I'd got a taxi, it would have just made it complicated for the morning, having to get a taxi back and then, yeah, waiting around for the transport. So, anyway, it, it was a killer. <laughs> you know, I am done in. Um, I'm gonna go and have a shower now and get something massive to eat um, and then hopefully get a good night's sleep. The guy did offer me a place up here on the top of the fortification with a nice view of the bay but I fancied being a bit down, a bit lower down because it's been quite breezy today and um, yeah I wasn't sure what it was going to be like in the night so anyway I'm all set up. Um, yeah like I said go have a shower get some food and then go to sleep. So thanks for watching, uh, come back tomorrow and we will walk on to Plymouth. Cheers guys, bye.